This week we had a very challenging project. The walls were 30 feet tall. We poured them all at one time in our mono, mono pour system. It worked flawlessly. We were really excited to, to do it. Maybe December we'll be able to put some pictures on this uh, video to show you what, they, what it looked like after we got it finished. One of the things that we did is we interviewed the homeowners that, while we were there, and Mitch uh, had asked me some questions about the, um, the way we attach things to the walls, we, we, the way we attach sheetrock and different things. And so, so we're going to go over that. You'll see that interview. Uh, we're talking about the webs that, uh, that we use to attach sheetrock and attach brick and siding and everything else to the houses. So we'll, we'll go over, we'll explain how that, that works. Uh, but we were really excited about the project. It was a really fun project to do. Very, very challenging. Uh, like always, the guys just came through. It was so, it was so perfect and exciting and, and uh, really fulfilling, I think, for them to be able to stand back and say, we did this and we did it really, really well. So hope you enjoy this video. Uh, a little bit of uh, insight about what we do with the inside of the blocks. Every time when we pour, the homeowners show up, and we love having the homeowners here. And that's been here for almost the whole uh, build from the time that started uh, the footings until the time that we finished and started pouring today. So she's actually living in an old section of the project. Um, how long have you had the, the house in here? I bought it in 2011. Okay. And there was an old house here where the new house is sitting. We tore it all down and uh, went back up with ICF. And so. Um, why? Why? Good question. <laughs> yeah. um, kind of an involved answer. Um, I've always known about concrete and known all of the wonderful things about concrete well, your, your since dad, I was a kid. Your dad's worked in concrete all of his life, right? Yep. And so I've, for, for my entire life, I've heard about all the different mixes and properties. And and um, then after you become a certain age and you, you know, own your own home, mm -hmm. right? and this one used to have wood siding too, right. um, you realize more and more that, gee, this could be a lot better. <laughs> so um, then then I met somebody here and became good friends with, and he actually built an ICF house in Philadelphia, but over there further, and um, then I got to see, actually be in one, experience mm -hmm. one, and so I am feel so fortunate to be able to actually build. Good. Well, the site is absolutely stunning. There's water on three sides of the knoll that we're sitting on here, and uh, it's just absolutely gorgeous. We're excited to put the property here. I think it'll be something that, as the boats come by, that they'll want to stop for just a minute and, and look at it. It's a great design. You've done a really good job doing that, uh, so we're anxious to get it all poured for you and get it on down the road to the next step. It's been wonderful. Yeah. Here with Mitch, the other half of the uh, homeowner duo of the house down in Shell Knob, and we were having a conversation. I thought, well, this is something that we really need to get on video for you guys because it's and it's it's questions that every single person that does an ICF house has. And so we've got a little ICF sample here that we can do and um, that we can use for a, a prop and talk about how to attach things to a wall. So tell me what you just said. Going off memory here, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, did uh, a, we did a great rehearsal just before this. <laughs> well, my question was, okay, if I want to hang a mirror or something, you know, it's not a two by four wall stud. You know, talk to me about, you know, how can I, how can I drill into this? Um, you know, what kind of weight can I expect it to hold? And, you know, how do I find the web? Or originally I used the word stud, but, but how do I find a web? And you had a really good explanation. It was really helpful. Basically, go down to the wall board, the trim at the base, and you know where where they've nailed in. That's kind of your marker, and then eight inches on either side of that, we can come up with a web. And then 
David, you talked about the depth of it, and you got a nice prop here. Did you just go over the depth, you know, the sheetrock, half inch, and then we got a half inch of, of foam. And, uh, so let, let's show people how this works. <clears throat> um, can you see the Fox Blocks December? Yep. Can you see that? Okay, so every eight inches on the form, there's going to be a web. And the web is a piece of plastic that's an inch and a half wide, which is exactly the width of a two by four. And it goes from the bottom all the way to the top, or from the bottom all the way to the top, completely interchangeable, uh, of each form. So you're not gonna miss it. If you go right in the middle of a, of, a, of a joint here, you'll miss it. But if you're an eighth of an inch down or an eighth of an inch up, you're always gonna hit a web. <laughs> and so the question is, how do you find the web? You know, once the sheet rocks up and it's painted, how are you gonna find one? It's like I was telling Mitch, you can go down to the baseboard, and I don't care how good your painters are, your stainers, you're, you're going to see a nail hole here and there every once in a while. That's where a stud is, or a web. And so you measure over eight inches, just like he was saying. The other thing that you can do, if you're gonna, if you're gonna mount a TV, like, like he was talking about, a TV is gonna be, you know, there's no such thing as a miniature TV anymore. It's gonna be a big TV. <clears throat> so most likely that part of the wall is gonna be covered up for years and years and years and years and years. And years. So if you'll take a finish nail that's two inches long and just start driving it into the sheetrock, eventually you're going to hit a web. The sheetrock is a half an inch thick. The foam on the web is a half an inch thick too. And so <clears throat> once it goes an inch down in and hits something solid, that's going to be a web. The web is designed to hold a screw better than a two by four does. So if you can screw something into your 2x4, your stud wall, that will hold with a stud wall, it's going to hold just as good or better with this web. Now you want to make sure, because you can see here how thick the web is, not very. You want to make sure that your screw, does, that the threads on the screw will actually still stay in the, in the plastic and not sink all the way through, because then it's not going to hold anything. But if, it, if you'll sink it into the web, it'll hold just, just better than a 2x4 does. So just remember, you've got a half an inch of sheetrock, you've got a half an inch of foam over this web. So you've got one inch that you've got to deal with before you're going to get to the solid web. And then the other thing that we talked about was, well, what's going to happen if I, you know, I'm really wanting to hang something really heavy and I miss the web and I hit on an electric wire? <clears throat> so this will be for another video, but when you're doing the electricity, you just take a chainsaw, a battery powered chainsaw, and cut a channel in your foam. Then you're going to tuck it all the way down in that channel, tuck it all the way down to the concrete. That's two and five eighths inches. And then you've got a half an inch of, of uh, sheetrock, so now you're at three and an eighth inches before you ever start. And if you're going to use a three inch screw to hang you know, something on a wall, it's got to be substantial. Guilty as charged. Yeah. I have three and a half inch torques that screws <laughs> in my arsenal. I promise not to bring them out at the new house. That's here. probably a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> they do make some uh, uh, some uh, stud finders that you can use. There are few and far between that work. There's one that I saw online called a Wallabot uh, that hooks onto your phone and it actually works. I've used it at my own house. Uh, it works and so you can find some stud finders that will work. And it'll find the wire, it'll find the pipe, it'll find uh, the studs, it'll find everything that you need. But that's what we wanted to talk about today was that you've got a stud every eight inches. It's an inch below the surface of the sheetrock and it'll hold just exactly like a stud. The other thing that you mentioned was don't get too aggressive on drilling or sinking these screws right? because we could easily strip this out mm -hmm. and use some delicacy there and, and make sure you don't over it. Right. Once you, once you feel it start snugging up, just stop. That's all you need. You don't have to drill it through the other side of the house. <laughs> Good. Good Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Appreciate it. Huh?
So hopefully you're able to see from uh, the videos that we had there that this was a really exciting project that we did. The landscape was unbelievable, water on all three sides. The job was, uh, was a very challenging job, but a lot of fun to do. Meeting with the homeowners is always an exciting thing for us, and when they ask questions and we're able to answer them. And I think, I hope that you were able to see <clears throat> the look on Mitch's face when, when he asked the question, and then I explained how it works. It's, it's one of those types of things like, oh, really? It's that easy? And we get that all the time. There's such a, um, uh, a worry all the time from people who are, how am I going to do this, and how am I going to do that, because nobody does this before and we don't know how to do it and when you tell them how to do it or you show them how to do it and it's so easy and becomes so obvious what you need to do then it just kind of takes all the mystery out of the product so hope you enjoyed what you saw today and learned a little bit we'll see you next time okay guys here's the deal <clears throat> i'm supposed to tell you to subscribe to our youtube channel i'm also supposed to tell you to ring the bell or click the bell or do something with the bell so that when we drop a new episode, it will actually alert you that we are there, that we want to talk to you, and you need to listen to us. So we hope that you will enjoy what we're doing, that you'll subscribe to our channel, and that uh, you'll ring the bell so that whenever we've got something there for you, you'll be able to respond to it. If you have a comment, please leave a comment. We will do everything we can to answer your comments. We might not post them all, uh, but we will respond to any comments that you, that you leave.